Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I wanted to take a few minutes and explore a question that I've had, and I'm sure you've run into before, which is, okay, I've got this whole set of images, say, for the luminance filter. How many of them, because they're not all the same quality, how many of them do I put together in that final image stack that I'll use to process for the final color image of the uh, DSO target that you just spent all those nights taking a pic taking pictures of. We can use fewer good quality images and presumably give us the best quality or the best detail image, or we can bring in more images, which necessarily means we bring in more poorer quality images in order to get an improved signal to noise ratio. Is there anything in the image metrics such as full width at half maximum, uh, number of stars detected, signal-to-noise ratio that can help us decide when to cut off the inclusion of images in that final image stack. And that's what I wanted to take a look at here. So here's the luminous data for M51. And you can see this number here on the left. It is uh, the the image weight, and it's just a number I define. It's kind of related to the full width at half maximum. I just take that number and multiply it times 100 and tack it on at the beginning of each file name. And now you can see that the best image in this stack, because we're sorted here, is the 6.69 image uh, on this day. And then if you scroll down through the 280 images I have of M80 or M51, it comes down to a 15.99 image as the worst case image. And in a little bit, we'll take, we'll take a look at those two images and compare them to see what good and bad look like. Now, what I'm doing, and the question I want to address is, when it comes time to do an image integration, obviously I'm going to start with the best images, but now the question is, how many of those images do I include? If the, the more images I include, the poorer quality the images are becoming. Also, the more images I include, the better I'm doing against the signal-to-noise ratio for the overall stacked image. Is there any guide I can use to decide that, yes, this is a better cutoff point than, say, this, or that's a better cutoff point than that? That's what I want to explore here. So let me go over and show you a set of what I've done to create a series of stacked images from these sets of data and from two other galaxies, M106 and M101. Now here's the stacked image sets for M. 51. As I said, there are a total of 280 images in uh, the, the Luminance folder. And what I've done is create a stack of the first 35 images, and then another stack involving the first 70 images, another stack involving the first 105 images, and I should say best 105 images, all the way up until I, include, I create a stack of all of the images. And then what I've done is taken these images here and fed them into Pix Insights subframe selector script to tell me for each image stack what is the signal to noise ratio, what is the star count, and what is the on average the full width at half maximum. So here's the first plot. Now what you're seeing here is for the three galaxies. I've got M51, M106, and M101 uh, plotted here and on the vertical axis I have the stacked image full width half maximum at half maximum. This is the number that subframe selector script would have come up with when handing them, handing it the stacked image sets that we just looked at. Down here is the worst case image weight for a given stack. So for example, this point here, each point here represents a stack. It's one of those files that you just looked at. And the worst, for this guy here, for example, the worst image grade in that stack is about 11.9. Out here, if you include all the images, then the worst image in the stack is the 15.99 that we saw in the, uh, in the luminance directory for M51. So that's what we're looking at here, the worst case image weight in a given stack, and that's plotted along with or against the stacked image full width at half maximum. So what we're seeing here is a tendency for the full width at half maximum as just to get a bit worse as we continue adding more and more images that are poorer quality. So we start down here in the image stack with only has say 35 images in it. It's the best quality from a full width at half maximum, but of course it's not going to be a good quality from signal to noise ratio because we have so few images. What would we like to see here? Well, I'd like to see a curve that looks like this where we have a constant image stacked image quality until finally we've just started adding images that are so poor that the overall image quality degrades rapidly. And then we would know that we could make this a cutoff point. 
But alas, we don't have that curve. We just have this gradual degradation of the image as we include poorer and poorer quality images. So there's no clear cutoff metric here. Now, let's take a look at the stacked image star count. In this case, obviously, we're looking at different targets, M106, M51, M101, and there are different parts of the sky. So the number of stars that are available to be detected is going to be different for each one of these fields of view. So that's why these lines won't stack up. As we start off with an image stack that has the best quality images, well, the number of stars detected in that image stack is pretty good. Uh, but as we include, as we go with image stacks that are that have poorer and poorer quality images, well, the total stars detected starts to drop, and we start to take a hit. Once again, I'd like to see a curve that looks like this, one that has the same number of stars detected until finally we've added too many ugly images, and it just causes the star count to drop precipitously. Once again, we're not seeing that here, so there's no clear cutoff metric here either. Now the story is a little bit different when we looked at the stacked image signal to noise ratio. In this case, we start off with our, our small number of images, 35 images included in a stack. They're high quality images, but there's only a few of them, relatively speaking. And as a result, our signal to noise ratio is relatively low. Now as we continue to add images, even though the quality of those images is decreasing as we continue to add images, we find that we do get some improvement, uh, continuous improvement, constant rate even, of improvement in the, signal, the, the stacked image signal to noise ratio. But then we start to see something that's a little more interesting than what we saw in the other two graphs. It starts to bend over so that once we get past the knee and the curve, but once we add more images, we're not seeing the same improvement in signal to noise ratio. I could add all of the images from here to here and only get a tiny bit of improvement in the signal to noise ratio. I got that same improvement in just adding 35 images down here, but here I had to add over a hundred to get that improvement. So that's something that jumps out at us. Now the thing we need to keep in mind here is that the uh, signal to noise ratio kind of follows a square root uh, function based on the number of images included in the stack. So that may be what we're seeing here. We may be seeing the diminishing returns that comes with just having so many images already in the stack that adding that next 10 images, that next 20 images, doesn't give us the same uh, bang for the buck that it did when we added the, those 10 images early on in the stack. So the way we want to test that is to, instead of plotting these lines against the worst case image weight as I have been doing, I'm going to instead plot these lines against the total number of images in the stack. And here's what we get. And we don't see that bend here. So in other words, that bend that we were just looking at has nothing to do with the number of images in the stack. In each case here, this is this graph is telling us, yeah, keep giving us more images and the signal to noise ratio will improve. You haven't you haven't hit that square root uh, behavior yet, so to speak. We haven't got to that point of diminishing returns. This is telling us to keep adding images. So what this is telling us is that the bend in the SNR curve that we just saw is not due to the number of images being stacked. The, the bend in the curve here is because we keep adding poorer and poorer quality images. And that's, a, that's something we want to know. What this is saying is that somewhere in here, and you could squint and decide where the knee and the curve of each one of these lines are, but if you could come up with just say some general guideline, not a hard and fast rule, but some general guideline, I would use my weighting factor and, and set a dividing line at about 10 so that I would include any image that has a weighting factor of 10 or less and, and simultaneously exclude images with a weighting factor greater than 10. In the recent study I did with the processing of M51, I think that stack that I had for the luminance was way out here. So in other words, I used a stack of, of images that had a significant number of relatively poor quality images and what this curve is telling me is I should have stopped back here. I should have stopped at a, at a maximum worst case image weight of about 10 instead of going all the way out on this curve here. Let's go over to PixInsight and see what that looks like. All right, so on the left here, you have the best quality image of the 280. So that's a 6.69 according to my weighting factor. This is the best quality image. This is the worst quality image on the, on the right here. It's 15.99. And you can certainly see even at this view that there's far less detail in this image on the right than there is on the left. And if we scroll in a couple of notches, 
we can see that there's very little detail in the uh, spiral arms. The stars are much larger. Clearly, there's a, I'm losing focus in this image, and I have a nice tight focus here on the image on the left, and that's probably the, the central uh, issue between these two images. And so this is what the good image looks like, and this is what the bad image looks like. Now, if I were to cut the uh, image selection off at an image weight of 10, here's what that image looks like. Here you can see this is the last image I would have included in the stack if I had done the analysis I just spoke of before I did the stack. And so here you can see that we have um, a bit more detail in the spiral arms. The stars have not totally, they're, they're, they're losing it, but they haven't totally lost their, their shape or size. And we clearly have a bit less detail, but there's a, a lot more detail here in this arm than there is in, say, the worst case image in the uh, directory there. If I then cut back and say, well, I'm going to redo the processing, but I'm only going to use the stack of images that go out to a worst case weight of 10, this is the stack I would have gotten here on the right. So this is the stack that only goes out as far as that green bar on the last plot we just saw. And then this is the luminance file that I used in the actual processing of M51. Now, when you get down and look at the stacked image, it's, it's quite difficult to see any significant uh, difference between these two stacked images. Again, here on the left is the one that I use for the processing. It includes um, at least uh, maybe 70 more poorer quality images than are included in this stack over here on the right. I don't see, and it's difficult to tell just by looking at the contrast areas in the spiral arms, that there is any significant effect on our improvement in this image for detail than there is over this one. We're not seeing much in the way of detailed differences between these two luminous images. Let's take a look at the final stacked image. Now there is a bit of a color difference, but that has nothing to do with the stacking of the images. That's just my decisions when I did the reprocessing with this higher detailed, supposedly, uh, luminous image. And honestly, I think you'd be very hard pressed to tell which one of these, again, ignoring any of the effects of color, just trying to pull out detail from this image. Can you tell which image is better than the other? And I think that's a very difficult proposition. Let's scroll over and look at more closely the uh, interacting galaxy over here that has some interesting kind of dust lanes in it. And once again, the, the image here on the right should be the one with the higher detail. And it is very difficult, if not impossible, <laughs> to tell any difference between these two images. Certainly nothing that jumps out at us. Uh, nothing is as clear as that graph would suggest uh, that, uh, that we're dealing with. So I'm not seeing a big difference between these two sets of images. And that's kind of the story of our hobby. We have a lot of different metrics that tell us a lot of different things about the uh, focus maybe or uh, noise levels. And I think we, we can fool ourselves by hanging our hats on these numbers uh, more than just hanging our hats on what we see. And, and uh, I think this probably takes the pressure off of uh, relying too heavily on these numbers. It's nice to explore and see what the numbers are. All right, so when I, include, when I redid the processing using a luminance image taken at this cutoff point instead of the luminance image I used originally, um, I think we would all agree that it's, we're kind of hard-pressed to tell that there's any significant difference in the detail of the final finished image. All right, so let's just sit back and summarize what we've seen here. The full width at half maximum does uh, increase gradually as poorer quality images are added to the stack. That's not much of a surprise. There's no aha moments in, in that plot, so there was no clear cutoff image grade. Uh, likewise, in star detections, we saw uh, the number of stars detected decrease gradually as gradually as we included poorer, poorer quality images. Once again, there was no clear cutoff image grade that uh, came out of that plot. We did see an effect with the stacked image signal-to-noise ratio. The results do suggest that there is 
a threshold of image quality for which you get improvements in signal-to-noise ratio. And beyond that quality, in other words, adding poorer quality images doesn't really improve the signal-to-noise ratio. Those findings would suggest that there is a limit to the improvement in signal-to-noise ratio as governed by the image quality that you're adding to your stack. And it, if you can cut off the poorer quality images, you should preserve some detail and uh, you won't lose any benefit to signal to noise if you uh, observe that limit. We did that and redid the, the luminance stack with M51 using that cutoff point and then compared the final processed image by eye and found that there wasn't any clear distinction between the final image where we used a larger number of poorer images than we had with the image, the luminous image stack that only had the better quality images. Once again, it kind of comes down to your own judgment. Just recognize that there is an effect of adding poorer quality images. Well, I wanted to take a look at this. I don't think I came across any uh, great aha moments out of this study, and I think if anything, I'm seeing that it, detail is in the eye of the beholder, and we just need to keep that in mind as we uh, go forth and collect data. See you next time. Clear skies.